The Right to Ricky Sanchez podcast is presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Sign up for DraftKings Sportsbook by using promo code RTRS and brought to you by Big Barker Therapeutic Dog Beds. Get yours at bigbarker.com slash Ricky. And the sponsor of the Corner 3 newsletter with Zoe, Stateside Urban Craft Vodka, now available in 44 states from statesidevodka.com. On the show today, well, we're bound to have one of these, and we had one of these. So win versus Charlotte. A total just fucking nightmare against Portland's backups. Not great. So we'll, we'll talk about that. Uh, the first round of all-star voting is out. We will talk about that. We will decide whether we should take comments from YouTube on the pod, as suggested by a commenter and by our video producer, CJ. Um, a potential Joel Embiid issue in the playoffs from a listener. And what would you show aliens about humans to let them know that we're okay? Um, a, uh, a plug for the Carl Landry Record Club podcast this week, Mutlu and I, a, a podcast about music for people that actually like all kinds of music. We talk about three albums, Blind Melon's Soup, Prince's Dirty Mind, and Aaron West and the Roaring Twenties, We Don't Have Each Other. Um, I mentioned Stateside Vodka. They have a amazing special going on right now, the Valentine's Day Stimulus Package. Mike, you get two bottles of Stateside Vodka a stateside candle, and a handful of condoms for just sixty nine sixty nine. The Really leaning into it. Yeah. <laughs> Eddie from Stateside told me what the special was. And I was like, I wish Valentine's Day could be all year so I could talk about it. So just go to statesidevodka.com for the Valentine's Day special. Remember, Stateside made here in Philly, gluten-free, kosher, carb-free, amazing. Uh, get it delivered at statesidevodka.com. You must be 21 to enjoy the Valentine's Day stimulus package. Without any further ado, Amos and the Chef. Larry, sweetie, the man is here. Say the name. I say the name. I say the name. We will write y'all. Welcome to the Rice Ricky Sanchez podcast. I'm Spike Eskin, along with a guy who three years ago today enjoyed a sport in Philadelphia. That is Mike Levin. Uh, not their best. No. Not their best. We are in February, mm-hmm. which means we're no longer in January. It's bound to happen. Uh, which means this is who they are now. So get used to weirdness like this. Mm-hmm. This is what we've come to expect. I don't wish that MB didn't play 34 minutes after hyperextending his knee. Yep. But he did look good. He did do some cool stuff. Uh, all for not. Yeah. Oh, well. Playing 34 minutes the night after playing 34 minutes, for, for what it's worth, uh, on the hyperextended knee. So Ben sits out with the sore calf, which seems like just sort of a maintenance day, especially with the— Totally fine. With the, uh, which we, we all support. Mm-hmm. Seems like a maintenance day, especially with the Brooklyn game being on Saturday and Portland That's being right. down. Lillard, McCollum, Nurkic, um, who else? I, I think like three other players. They were down. So uh, Drexler didn't play either. <laughs> no, Arvidas Sabonis either. No, no Sabonis in there. Yeah. So so they you know they rest Simmons, which is is fine. Uh, now I will say this: I'm I'm not typically excuse maker. However, if we're talking about situations, game before the big game, oh yeah, second night of a back to back, and first sure. night at home after a road trip, and a, playing a team that was missing their two best players, Trap City, Trap City. So 
not totally because there's not there's not too much to even diagnose about this game or even like care about it aside from the fact that this was the second time in two weeks that Embiid, second time in 10 days, that Embiid fell and it looked really bad. The first time was on his tailbone and this time tweaked his knee. Um, I, I Look, I, 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 I hate being like super cautious guy, but it did feel sort of not worth it to bring him back to the game after he did that. So. Yes. Right? Yes, it did. I mean, I know that, look, I, we just, this is just something we're gonna, always going to talk about, mm-hmm. and that the fan base is wants to be more cautious with Joel than Joel or the coaching staff does. Mm-hmm. And so I, I think this is just what it's going to be. Um, they always play weird games against Portland. Uh, Embiid wanted to be out there. I think he wanted to take care of business, especially without Ben. And, and without Ben, that you know, I think maybe if Ben had been in there maybe they say like maybe just rest it for for saturday but uh yeah i mean it's not like he didn't look good like he looked great <laughs> he played really well. well he had 31 in the fucking first half he was unstoppable 31 in the first half he was on pace to be the first sixer to score f- over 50 since iverson in 05 which is pretty crazy and, and by the way um, not just 31 in the first half 25 in the second quarter yeah ridiculous <laughs> yeah uh and i i did cross check that with uh Resident Sixers historian Dave Reuter. Um, and that's correct. Who, had, who knew that that Iverson in 05 game against the Hawks. Uh, immediately as I, when I asked about it, he said, Iverson scored 50, they lost, and everyone was mad at John Salmons. <laughs> uh, so it's good, it's good to know that, that he's still operating on all cylinders. Um, I thought Embiid, I mean, let's just, talk, let's just like be excited about Embiid for a sec. Yeah. Uh, that, that play... Where CJ Ellaby helps Harry Giles in the post, and then Bede hits a uh, contested and one step back fadeaway, just ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Um, his touch is just unreal. On mid range jumpers, if it like if it touches the rim, it's finding its way in. Yeah, it just has it has that level of like you know Kawhi has that sometimes where it's just like if he, if he gets it on the front rim, it's gonna it's just going in somehow. Yeah, we keep waiting uh, for those the mid range shots to stop falling, but they're they. They have not yet, you know? Yeah. yeah it doesn't yeah. even – it's it's to the point where I'm surprised if it doesn't go in. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. It, it's, I mean, it'll happen in some sense, but, you know, he's shooting – he was perfect from the line, nine for nine. He's got those – he shoots over 80% on those little one dribble pull-ups from the, from the nail. Like, it's just automatic, uh, especially because defenders are kind of on their heels thinking that he's going to – a 300-pound guy is going to bowl into them. And then he goes straight up and, and has, like, very gentle touch. Unbelievable. And it's fun to see, you know, I'm going to talk about his, there's some really frustrating passes that Joel makes. Some, like, just get the ball out of here and, and he misses by, I don't know, I don't know how he misses some passes by so many feet. There, I, I find it hard to believe that he's the same person with the delicate touch as he is throwing, like, a, you know, a Donovan McNabb pass in the dirt. And I'm a McNabb <laughs> fan. But on passes, like, on kickouts occasionally, it's like a worm burner. Uh, just f- four feet off target, at least. There, um, there was a little more but, of that old MB in the yeah. second half of those passes. Yeah, tonight. for sure. Yeah. Just the kind of frustrated, just yeah. like with whatever. Um, but it is, you know, not just this game, but you know, when Embiid has cross switches on him or smaller defenders, it's it's so gratifying to see him just decide I'm going to catch the ball right underneath and use my huge ass to get whatever space I want. Uh, and they have to foul me if they want to stop me, or I'm just going to get a nice, easy little bucket, little duck in. Uh, so that's nice because for, I mean, against bigger defenders like Cantor is physical with them and those kinds of guys. Um, but for a long time, he he kept receiving the ball too far out and was not getting easy looks for himself. And and now he is. Uh, it's it's nice, and I, I hope he's okay. If he's if he feels with any swelling, I don't care if he doesn't play in the Nets game. It doesn't matter. It's the regular season. Um, but I was okay. Yeah, I mean, it brings back. I hate non-contact, you know, which is what was I, it non? I never yeah. got a good look at it. Yeah, so I wasn't it was sure one, if it was like a foot or like a bang knee or situation. No, no, no. It landed and then it like buckled out. Yeah, yeah, which is you know that that's where you find menisci and ACLs and and shit like that. So, um, so I, 
you know, and they they do have a habit of sending players back in <laughs> historically yeah. through through all the eras, any regime. <laughs> yeah. That's the that's the consistent, and it's good to have organizational continuity. In yes, that, in that sense, I think so they know what to expect. You know, but yeah, it was it was an amazing game, and, and he, I'll repeat it again. He, without the crowd there, he just stays sort of like even the whole time. You know, like he almost doesn't a lot of times doesn't even look like he's enjoying himself facially. There's not a ton of like um, a ton of that, but he I wouldn't mind if he started yelling at some on on away games when there's still crowd in the place. I wouldn't mind if he got into <laughs> some chairs. LeBron type con- confrontation with uh, courtside Karen and, yeah. you know, roided up weirdo. Yeah. That kind of stuff would be fun for me. I think Embiid would be great in that role. Yeah, I, I but he's he's. Amazing! It, what did, he, did he finish with thirty-seven tonight? I think. Yeah. So, you know, I, he's what's he probably averaging twenty-eight and a half points, twenty-nine points. I, it's unbelievable. It's been a an unbelievable season so far, and he's um, he's pretty incredible. Oh, yeah. And I, I just got a note, Art, and an, uh, I suppose check. We will have the information on Saturday, but we're getting a special odds boost for MVP for Joel Embiid on DraftKings only for listeners so you're going to get much better odds so we'll have we'll Very have cool. all the information on Saturday on or Sunday's pod that. rather Sunday's pod yeah I think also Embiid being this good and he's been this good all year but it's coinciding and I, I sort of hinted at it last podcast but like man am I getting tired of Dwight oh boy am I getting tired of Dwight here's one thing I I thought cuz I thought the same thing was he this like dipshit flagrant guy when he was good or is this the uh good as in with the lakers last year or good as a younger player no good as a younger player because i don't remember i don't remember him being this way no 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 no. he's he's he reinvented himself over those last four or five years kind of as a enforcer just a yeah Yeah. enforcer workman okay lunch pail type yeah not that he wasn't getting some of those easy buckets and offensive rebounds and stuff, but this is now just being like overly physical, exclusively physical. And the missed dunks and the... The missed dunks are inexplicable. Obviously, the free throw line we talked about. Fouling on 70% of the screens he sets. Uh, negating buckets, missing lobs, turning the ball over, dribbling. Stop dribbling for the love of God. Uh, yeah, getting getting... Getting over it with Dwight, and as the trade deadline kind of approaches in the next, when is it? Is it March? Do they move it to March? I think. I think. It's yeah. March. Yes, I think it's in March. Um, yeah. Um, I can. Starting to, you know, there's there's three backup centers in this team, and I I'm I'm beginning to trust none of them. So I would I would like to have at least some other option in place if we want to go. If if that's a PJ Tucker trade and, and you play small when when needed. I'm not saying Dwight doesn't get a chance to play on the team the rest of the season, but like it'd be good to have some other options because his weaknesses are, you know, game losing type weaknesses. Yeah. It's amazing how quick it turned. I mean, we like a week or two weeks. And it'll get good again, but like right this is a bad this is a very bad and frustrating stretch. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. Um, How do you feel about starter Korkmaz? I was happy that he got in there. Um, I was happy that they started him. I understood the reasoning behind it. You know, you don't if you're playing everything through Embiid, you don't really need. I mean, they don't really even ha- normally have a normal point guard in there to start the game anyway. So just adding shooting was fine, um, and I thought he looked pretty good to start the game. But I'm sort of worried. So what did you you were fine with them starting him, right? I kind of like that they started him. Yeah, no problem. I think I think Maxie's been pretty bad uh lately. I think he's been he gets going in in garbage time and and that's, you know, nice for him. I it's a good time to get his reps in and get more confident and stuff, but he doesn't look comfortable at all when he's playing with Joel or anything where he's not like the only guy on the floor that can do anything. Um so I didn't mind Corkman's. I thought Corkman's was playing pretty good. I thought he played pretty well tonight even though he didn't shoot well. Um, he had a floater. That's that's exciting. He had a little up and under around Cantor. Corkmas did. Um, 
He's that, a crafty that player, man. That up and under was pretty course. was pretty slick, you know. For sure. Um, so I, was, I, I think I think mixing guys in and, and keeping guys fresh, and uh, he also only played like 18 minutes or something last night's game. So he he led the team in minutes tonight with 38. Um, so I don't I don't mind him. Just like you know, let's let's burn let's burn out Corkmaz for a night. Uh, but yeah, Mac, Maxi hasn't been good. I know Doc likes sh- taking Shake off the bench. Shake played pretty okay, but um, yeah, I, I obviously I I'm very high on Maxi. I'm, I was high on incoming uh, out of the draft, and uh, they definitely got him as a steal at 21. But it's not like unreasonable to say that he's playing like a rookie. Like he has he he turns the ball over uh, in stupid ways sometimes. Uh, he doesn't look confident shooting from the outside. He missed a three by three feet. He kind of only looks comfortable shooting off his own dribble. Um, he doesn't get to the line. He commits some like dumb reach fouls. But he's a rookie, and, and this is why you play him because I think that there is a lot of upside there, both in this year and beyond. And uh, he provides a, a quickness and a finishing at the rim skill set that most other guys on the team don't have with the ball in their hands. Um, so I think it's worthwhile doing. And it'd be good to get him on track. I mean, he did he did finish with 15 points on eight shots, so it was a good a good night for him overall. But um, finding ways for him to succeed with like some of the starters in will, I think, be important if he wants to get playoff minutes. Yeah, be, because it, especially because he's not just going to be able to go hyper maxi all the time when he plays when when the games matter. He's going to have to learn to play with everybody else. I certainly noticed the off the catch. Um, reluctancy to shoot really it, it he doesn't he i don't i don't think he feels comfortable shooting that way you know um yeah. I, i'm a little and then we'll talk about curry in a second i'm it's been now since january 20th which was the celtics game was the last time we saw a what i would call a good shake milton game he he's had some not bad games but it there, there hasn't been much of anything, and he looks visibly frustrated to me. I wish he would complain a little bit less to the refs, but he looks visibly frustrated to me, and he, there's something that's not clicking. Everybody will go through hot streaks and cold streaks, but I'm wondering if you see anything there. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't seem to be... Uh, I think, my, to my eye, his shot has gotten flatter over from year to year and I think that in some ways that maybe helped his mid-range and his even his foul shooting it's like it's a straight line um and I wonder if that has damaged his three-point shooting because he has just not been shooting well really at all you don't there were, there were times earlier this year and and most of last year when you, it just it was just automatic like it was it was a layup for him from from on open looks and he just doesn't have that right now um so i think maybe that part of his game being a little bit like shaky right now is uh is maybe contributing to some of it and i wonder if it's just a matter of you know working through this cold stretch figuring out like how to best impact the game as a sixth man you know i think i think in this game specifically i'm not concerned about shake long term i think it's fine um i think he'll, he'll regain it but in this game specifically you know it was very noticeable that Ben Simmons wasn't there. Uh, they shot 0 for 10 from 3 in the first half, uh, 7 of 27 from 3 overall. He's just so good at getting guys wide open looks for 3 that I think we take it for granted because it's like, it's not like he's doing sexy stuff to get into the paint to then find guys in their shooting pocket. It's sort of just like rudimentary, honestly, and, it, and, he, and he makes it look easy. But those are helpful looks and guys they weren't getting good open looks they weren't getting you know Embiid was kicking it out throwing to their shoelaces um Seth can't get any open looks right now at all um and obviously he was maybe sick tonight hopefully he feels better he hasn't aside from one game he hasn't been playing well since he got back from COVID um and so yeah I think that ultimately like there are when we talk about Ben, we talk about a lot of things that he can't do. But the, without him, there are noticeable things that the Sixers do worse. Um, and getting decent looks for three is is absolutely one of them. Yeah, I agree. And the the other thing that it points to is because they are not 
because none of their players are really because of how their offense works and their offense sort of depends on everyone. You know, like everyone has a specific role and there's a lot of there's kind of a lot of moving parts in their offense. When one of those parts isn't there, they don't have like a Simmons is such a, a particular player. They don't have anyone to fill that role. No. You know, like you, th- there's th- there's other players on the team that there might be somebody who's not as good as what the player does that they can put in there. But Simmons specifically, there's just no one that does that stuff. And they do look yeah. – they did look lost without it, you know. Yeah, and the defense looked bad. I mean, Portland hit shots. Like, they just shot really, really well. Um, Rodney Hood seems to always kill us. Mm-hmm. Gary Trent hit a couple tough buckets. Um, Cantor always gives Embiid some trouble. Part of it was just like they looked slow. like the the Blazers had nineteen or nineteen offensive rebounds through three quarters. They finished with nineteen also, so they I think they took their foot off the gas. But through three quarters, they had nineteen offensive rebounds, and that's just like unacceptable. And the Blazers were shooting well, so it wasn't like it was like they were getting their offensive rebounds of the few few misses that they had. Um, I don't know what happened. At halftime, being outscored forty to nineteen in the third quarter by a bad Blazers, like depleted Blazers team, is pretty embarrassing. It is the last back to back until after the All Star break when the new schedule will come out. Uh, so hopefully that's good. Um, Tobias didn't play well. It's just like every across the board, they looked sort of, uh, especially against Charlotte, especially defensively. Rich Hoffman had a good article about it in the Athletic about like how in sync the defense was um, and just communicating and switching and switching back and all that stuff. And it seemed like in this game, there was none of that. Yeah. There was just like not any. And that was, it was a lot of, you know, Portland was hitting shots, but there were like easy looks. There were like passes and just confusion and all that stuff. And I think uh, missing Ben and then missing Seth and then just generally having like dead legs and uh, there was no once, once MB, like as much as, as much as Embiid going off in the second quarter was was awesome to watch, it does get to there's some of the you know what we talked about with like Kawhi in the Raptors series a couple of years ago where it's like if one guy is just doing everything, then everybody else is kind of just a little standing around, mm-hmm. and you there is a tendency to just watch and then when the ball does get to you, you're like I haven't touched the ball in a position to do anything with it in, in eight minutes of game time. <laughs> Uh, and so I think not that Embiid was like being too much of a ball hog or anything. It's just like, he's hot, he's giving him the ball. And then, you know, with the Sixers down a couple guys, there was, there seemed to be less fluidity. And I thought that that was kind of extended to, you know, basically everybody that wasn't Joel tonight. Yeah. That there was, there was just no juice. There was no juice at all. There was no pop in the game at all. And then once the, I think they mentioned it on TV. Once the Blazers started rolling and hitting shots, they did look like, you know, one of the when the the underdog team is doing that, they feel good and they play kind of free. You know, like mm-hmm. w- once the Blazers started hitting shots, they seemed tough. And you know, <laughs> Carmelo had a good game. He was kind of they couldn't guard him. They were doubling him as soon as he touched the ball. It was yeah. it was fucking crazy, man. Yeah, so whatever. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you just don't have it. Yeah, they didn't have it didn't tonight. Have it. There were injuries. I'm not like it was a frustrating game to watch. I I did kind of think early in the fourth quarter, I was like, and beat staying out there. Okay, mm. they got a couple looks. It was too long, and I was like, maybe maybe they come back. That would be like a like a gutsy kind of win, even even in like a bad circumstance. Um, but ultimately, it's like I would have rather and beat played fewer minutes and, and lost this game and just been fine moving on to the Nets and then beat the Nets and become the, like, fuckboy Sixers of that we know and love where they lose, lose the easy games and win the hard games. Let's be that again. Yeah. Well, the uh, the Nets game is, assuming everybody plays, is is big and is exciting. So uh, and th- this loss doesn't change that. So, um, so hopefully it, it was, you know, they're going to have schedule losses, everybody in the, the league yeah, does. Yeah, for so. sure. And, hey, get Isaiah Joe some minutes. Come on. They, they got he a few tonight. He, he, the, yeah. it's, a shoot, it's a sweet stroke. He can't defend right now. He's too small, but he tries. We got We got to find some time for Isaiah Joe. He's so skinny. He's so skinny. Well, Simon, Simons, who is skinny himself, like with just basically bullied him from half court to the rim to <laughs> score at the end of the third. And yeah. it's like, that's what's happening there. You couldn't even tell he's there. 
Simon said 14 in 19 minutes, I think. It's my guy. There you go. That's my guy. Between Simons and Trent Jr., that was a Simons, Trent Jr., and uh, and uh, Covington. It was a nice, nice. Congrats on your win. They... <laughs> Trent's good, man. That dude is good. Gary he Trent is, is good. Ballsy scorer. Yep. Ballsy, ballsy player. Hit shots. He's weird. It's his block. It's so interesting. Like to my eye, a very good defender, but his block and steal rates are extremely low. Extremely low for how well, he's for physical. how you would expect him to play. He's very physical, and yeah. I think he 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 like is a good ball stopper. But maybe he just doesn't help off other guys and get yeah. and get steals off ball and stuff. He's he's built like a fucking truck, man. That he's a a strong dude. He's a, he's a good player. He's he's gonna be around for a while. He's starting now, yeah. right? Uh, he's a he's a good player. Mike, the uh, big game is on Sunday. You have a a pick for the game for the big game. Uh. I just think that the game is going to be big. <laughs> That's my prediction. That's what I've been big hearing way. at all the commercials. That it's going to be a big game. It's going to be big. Yeah, I I personally don't think I could deal with Brady winning this one. I can't stand him. Uh, I I think for for my enjoyment purposes, I think a, a Casey win would would feel better than sort of legitimizing the greatness of Tom Brady, which I sure you know. I mean, well, it's, I think it's been pretty legitimized. <laughs> I don't oh. know, man. He hasn't he hasn't won without Belichick yet. <laughs> uh, the uh, I saw that the mayor of Tampa is considering renaming Tampa Tampa if they were. Oh no! Which I, I'm partially rooting for. Yeah, that... I, I do. I do have to admit, I, I obviously like Mahomes. There's a lot of guys in, on Kansas City. Lot, I mean, Andy, come on. Yeah. There's obviously bad guys on both teams. Yep. <laughs> um. But uh, I might be rooting for um, Tampa. Yeah, just just because I root for a, mistakes. A, I like what a good thing that would be. Yeah, uh, DraftKings Sportsbook, the leader in not only uh, uh, online uh, sports betting and gambling, but the leader in one day fantasy sports for Sunday. They brought back their golden ticket giveaway, huge prizes total up to fifty five million bucks this year. Anyone who joins DraftKings. Free fourth quarter big game prop challenge gets a free instant prize with one taking home a million dollar top prize. Download the app now, enter the free fourth quarter challenge, answer questions like who will score last, and then you can get ready to make it rain in, in Tampa. Uh, rewards up to 25 grand in prizes. Um, awesome. Uh, DraftKings has paid out over $7 billion to its players since 2012. Uh, and you know, part of that seven billion has been my four or five hundred dollars in Ben Simmons three point bets. So that's that's Every gone time. to you. Yeah, DraftKings safe, su- secure, reliable. You deposit your money, it's in there. You withdraw, it's out. It's the best. Download the DraftKings app now and use promo code RTRS to get a free shot at fifty five million dollars in total prizes when entering DraftKings free fourth quarter prop challenge. That's promo code RTRS to get a free shot at fifty five million dollars in total prizes. See. DraftKings, no, only at DraftKings. Minimum $5 deposit. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. You know, I know how much you, you love when we, when we talk YouTube. Uh, please smash that subscribe button. CJ, who produces our videos, has been saying, hey, you should read a comment every pod from the YouTube. You know, people will like that. They'll comment more, so on and so forth. I don't need more comments. It's just going to make me angrier. But, but then... So I, I said, yeah, yeah, we'll do it. And then I didn't do anything about it. But then we got a comment on the YouTube from Russell. You guys should really be reading a few YouTube comments on your pod. It would encourage people to click the video, watch the video, subscribe, leave a comment. All these things would help your videos get more views. Now, I know it's a podcast and you don't care. And he used hashtag marketing, which I think was shoving in our faces. So I think we got to, I mean, I assume, you, do you want to name it? Does that going to make it easier for you to stomach? Like the no, <laughs> there's nothing that would make me, make this easier for me to stomach. Well, okay, here's one that I, I feel like you're gonna feel. So this one came from Michael. He says, "For some reason, I always think a Matisse three is going in. I think I'm subconsciously thinking he can't miss every single shot or something, which I thought was very funny. The do theory, yeah, that he's do theory <laughs> that uh, was passed down from dad to dad, <laughs> many generations of." Of being due, 
well, uh, the do- I get that. The do I, theory. I respect it. <laughs> the do theory is like the get it under 10 by halftime. Yeah. St- 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 steep it's ra- the only way you can come back from games is if there's round numbers involved. <laughs> is there a player in the league that you are rationally – that isn't good – that you fear sort of when you're watching them play the Sixers. I guess Terry Rozier is a, a but he's kind of good. Yeah. Ro- well, yeah. Rodney Hood would definitely yeah. would have been that. He's also pretty good. Um, Baines. Yeah. That's it's, I mean, I guess it's more like guys who have beaten the Sixers before inexplicably than, yeah. than anything that like about them. Otherwise, <laughs> um, I do always think a Sabonis shot is going in, even though he's not a good outside shooter. It just feels like he just feels like he has all the answers, and I, f- I assume every shot's going in on his end. It's crazy when he his rookie year shot so many threes, and when I watch him shoot threes, he looks so uncomfortable doing it now. Uh, he because it it looks like it's all sort of like in his wrist, Sabonis. Yeah, it looks like he has trouble getting it there. It's amazing they made him shoot so much. Uh, before he was in Indiana. God, that guy's fucking good. So the the All-Star voting, the first round of All-Star voting came out. So Sixers in All-Star voting. So it's front court and back court. Eastern, three front court players, two back court players. Eastern Conference goes Durant at 2.3 million, uh, Antetokounmpo at 1.7, and then Joel at 1.5 million. And then the next highest is Tatum at 800,000. So... Oh. Sorry, Tatum. Yeah. So now I think I think it's only. And I would love to see him in that starting spot too, because I, you know, I root for the guy for uh, sure. Um, so Durant, Antetokounmpo, and Embiid is a pretty fucking amazing front court, I would say, and and deserves it. Uh, following that, then Butler, Adebayo, Sabonis, Randall, whatever. Top two guards: Bradley Beal and Kyrie Irving, but James Harden right behind Kyrie Irving. I just want to put into perspective what a difference a year could make. The Eastern Conference starting all-star lineup could be James Harden, Bradley Beal, Kevin Durant, Giannis, and Embiid, which is a fucking squad. Like, that is really, really good, you know? Um, And I feel like it's been a lot of years since the Eastern Conference, like, seemed that imposing in the all-star game. And I know you're not yeah. a huge All Star guy, but that, I think it's pretty cool. I mean, I think at this point there there are more contenders in the East than the West. Yeah, I, I agree. Think the East is a better conference. I think the West is deeper. I think there are m- more decent teams in in the West, and the best team um, probably in the West. What did you say? The best team is probably in the West as well. Like the Lakers are are still the best team. Maybe I think. Yeah, maybe. Um, but yeah, I think there's a lot of. A lot of good players. So Simmons in tenth and guard. So if he makes it, he'll have to be you know a, a bench selection. I don't think this is the year for him. I would be my guess. But Tobias Harris nowhere in the top ten. He deserves it. That's, I think. Just, that's just voting though, right? That's, that's like just voting. voting yeah, but like you know, because I I think this has got to be a year. You know, when you look at the other forwards, okay, Adebayo's played well. Uh, Sabonis has played well. But I would put be, just because the team is better, I would put Tobias ahead of Randall, and I would put him again ahead of Hayward, and I would put him ahead of Grant. Wouldn't you? Randall's been good for the Knicks. Yeah, but they're not good. Sure, I, you know? but I, th- I think I think uh, I think whoever, what is it? Co- coaches? Who's pick? Who else is picking with the fans? I never. I, th- I think there's a. I think do the, don't don't the do writers vote to coach? No, maybe it's the coaches. I think it's half. I think the starters are half fans and then half coaches, and then coaches pick the bench. Coaches definitely pick the bench. Okay, I think it'll be. I think Tobias will get in. I think he is well liked. Mm-hmm. I think people respect the Sixers. Will figure to be either the best or second best team in the East going into the All Star break. So that'll be in their favor. And I think just to everyone's eye, this has been a what's going on with Simmons kind of year, even though it's like. It's starting to normalize a little bit. Like Simmons in that Charlotte game had a couple uh, nice little hook shots and that and a couple nice finishes around the rim. Still, too, still not enough dunks. Guys got to dunk more. Mm-hmm. Like, just dunk. Um, but that, I think it is starting to regress back to where it normally is. But I think Tobias has been, you know, the game winner against the Lakers is big. I think 
I think they'll just like want to reward him. I feel pretty confident saying that Tobias will be an all star this year. And good play- for him. He deserves it. And he is my best friend. Yeah. Are you ready to pay him yet or no? Is it part of your sal- May Dude, maybe everything got fucked up when you forced Tobias to pay Shake. Like, maybe the more highly paid the player is on the Sixers, the less good they are. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. The uh, money that the- is Shake is carrying around now is difficult. He should find some <laughs> sort of coin purse that he can put off to the side and leave it in like a trusted associate's hand so he's not playing with $10 million in his pocket. Um, but, to buy, you know, bad to buy his game. But, you know, I'm, he's my guy. He, he bounces back. I've always believed in him. We are in love with each other. All that good stuff. Yeah, Tobias hasn't had a bad game in forever. Like uh, no. the first week of the season, he's he was okay to to have one. Lorenzo Brown mailbag writes to Ricky Sanchez at gmail dot com. Send us a basketball question, non basketball question. Now, for some reason, I didn't take the basketball question. I think it's because we already answered it. But Dominic asks, if aliens came down to Earth, what three things would you show them to convince them that we were a cool and peaceful species? I mean, I would take them to a dog park. But that's not our species. <laughs> but there that are people different. at a dog park. Dogs don't so you're going them. to the dog park to, to show the aliens the people. Well, show the aliens the people and the dogs. I think people are, are at their best when they're with their pets. I know this is just sort of like stock for me, but I... I I do think you see the best out of even people that are not good people. When they're around their pets, they seem like better people. I feel like there's good answers to this question. I don't. I don't feel like I'm properly equipped with them right mm. now. Yeah. Um, a cool and peaceful species. Yeah. A water park. That's not. I mean, one of the most chaotic places in the world. <laughs> <laughs> but the a people are being peaceful, right? I mean, everybody's... No, there, in... there's, there's shoving and butting in line <laughs> and peeing in the wave pool. Well, Aliens the... would be like, if, if, you, if your best representation of humans as a species is a water park... Is Wild Water Kingdom? <laughs> I mean, aliens, if I'm aliens, I'm like, no thanks. I'm good. You've never what been... What would I show them? I don't know. I'd show them like... Uh... Like gushers, the candy. Like, look how we can make these little, little things taste good with a little, little sort of, little juice in the in the middle. We did it. We're humans. We made these gushers. We're good. What Something if you like showed that. them like a kids like a second grade choir? No, that's boring <laughs> and bad. <laughs> I have all these ideas. You're just shooting them down. Yeah, I am shooting them down. I just, I Gushers wanna... is so far in the lead, I think. There's a nut gusher. It's not too loud. I'm not going to bother you. It's just like a nice, unhealthy treat. Jamie from New Zealand writes in and says, I'm currently at work here listening to the Bill Simmons pod, Forgive Me, about Brad Beal trades, and they've just discussed the Sixers fit and trading Ben for Beal. Toward the end, Bill Simmons says, quote, Tobias Harris gives you 75% of Bradley Beal. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Fuck, no. <laughs> God damn it. And I just thought it was a hilarious statement given how the season began. So my basketball question is this. Given the season so far, uh, what percentage of Bradley Beal do you think Tobias Harris is? I think 75% is generous, but interested to hear your thoughts. <laughs> what percentage of anything? What percentage of Bradley Beal am I? <laughs> I mean, I'm, we're both human beings. All right, he's like six inches taller than me. So you're asking what so the I'm, base of of same is? What? Yeah. What is? How? What is zero percent? Is like Boban and Ish Smith? Is that like Ish Smith gives you zero percent of Boban? Like I need to know. Well, no, they're both basketball players. I think it has to be at least on the basketball player adjusted okay. scale. So on the I'm basketball saying, player like, scale, you know, I think Ish Smith and Boban is a fair zero percent. Yes. Okay. Then I think Tobias gives you it's pretty I guess I I guess 70 75 in, the, in that like Tobias is going to be an all-star this year. That's still like 
Sure. I guess I don't feel good about my <laughs> the my now the Mike Scott percentage. Yeah. So then Mike Scott then thus prior to the Tobias Harris Renaissance had been giving you what? Fifty percent of what Bradley Beal did? That's not true. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm opting out. I'm opting out of the bubble. <laughs> That's great. Uh, this comes from Brad. Hey, Spike and Mike. I hope you guys are doing well. My name is Brad. I live in Beechwood, New Jersey. Been a lifelong Sixers fan. Have been listening to you guys since 2016. This is my first time ever reaching out, so I hope this finds you. Anyway, a thought came across my mind while watching the game against Minnesota that I'd love to get your guys' take on. While it's obviously great that Joel is getting to the line, I'm a bit concerned that he won't be getting as many calls in the playoffs, and a major part of his game and the offense won't be as effective. I believe Harden has struggled in the postseason for the same reason. I'm also throwing in there Lou Williams is not the same level, but struggles in playoffs as well. I'm also reminded of the last play in Game 5 against the Celtics in 2018 where Joel had the ball in the post against Baines and they didn't blow the whistle when he was clearly fouled and he could have tied the game at the line. Am I reading into this too far or do you guys share the same concern? Love all the content. Keep up the great work. Thanks so much for reading my email. I think it's a a good point. Yeah. Yeah, I think think it's valid. I think there's times, even when Embiid is rolling, and he goes to the line obviously a lot in the top three or four guy to get get into line in the league but there's times when he's just not getting the call when refs are just like you're kind of flailing you're Mm -hmm. kind of just swinging your arms we're not giving it to you and he does get fouled a lot like he does get fouled and sometimes they don't call it because they're not going to call everything um and that's going to happen in the playoffs and there's going to be you know shorter rotations and better defenders and more focused defenders all that stuff so absolutely i think uh i think him being this good from the mid-range is important i think him being willing to shoot threes when he's open is important. Um, and I think him doing what he has done a lot of this year, but not all the time tonight included of just like getting rid of the ball when the double team comes and making the quick right pass is, uh, is important. Um, but a lot of it'll just be like, can we get him easy looks? And is that, is that like shake, shake Ben or shake Joel pick and rolls where you can get him some easy ones? Um, Benjoel, like snug, snug pick and rolls, those kinds of things. Because it's going to be, you know, late in the game, they are going to, uh, you know, drill down on him and and whack the crap out of him. So yeah. it'd be good to get keep him like fresh so that he's not dragging from how much he's carried us before. Mike, I uh, I took Rebel to the vet on Wednesday. And, um, you know, the vet during COVID is different than it was. Obviously, you can't go in there. You drive up and you call in and they come get your dog. Now, Rebel is a a little bit of anxiety with Rebel, a lot of bit of anxiety. He was even anxious when we went to the vet with us. They bring him out a half an hour later and tell me that he got so nervous, he shit all over the exam room cried scratched at the door and they said if the next time he comes in we are not permitted to go in with him they will have to do the exam outside so that's the kind of dog i have yeah yeah really just that sounds sounds like a good dog yeah (laughs) and of course on the way home i'm apologizing to him anyway i love my dog if you love your dog even if he's a bad boy like mine is you have to get your dog a big barker go to bigbarker.com slash ricky get him the only or her the only real dog bed only real dog bed engineered by experts to support your bad dog as your bad dog sleeps at night what does that support means what means um you know uh better joint health it means better sleep it means uh less pain as they get older Uh, less joint stiffness, all that stuff. Dogs, just like us, they need something comfortable to sleep on. And the Big Barker dog bed is the only one that, again, engineered by experts and proven by Penn Vet to actually do all of these things. Go look at the pictures. BigBarker.com slash Ricky. If you go there, you get two process pup patches. That's the only way you do it, the official process pup logo. Um, and you get the bed, which comes with a 10-year warranty. The foam doesn't flatten or they replace it for free. A one-year at-home trial. If you don't like it, send it back. I don't know if there's a shit policy, 
but I don't I don't think there's any chance your dog won't like it enough that there will be an accident. I don't think that would be a problem. Um, they'll even they'll even pay for the shipping if you send it back. Made in the USA. Um, I love my big barker. Well, Rebel loves his big barker. Uh, I love that he loves it, and I love that I know I'm doing the right thing for him, and you should do that too. Big barker dog beds. <laughs> yeah, and living at the line in the playoffs doesn't really happen that much, you know. So um, good that he can do it in the regular season, but yeah, good, good also for them to develop other plans and other ways to yeah. score. A uh, couple more. This one comes from Mickey. Basketball question with two outlandish assumption, assumptions. Assuming no more major roster moves on the Sixers or elsewhere in the conference, if the Sixers finish the regular season with the best record in the East, major assumption number two, would you, Spike, consider them the most likely team in the East to reach the finals? I assume Vegas would make them the favorite if they finished with the first seed. I'm just curious what you would predict. I'm not as curious about what Mike would predict because that prediction would obviously be a stroll to the finals in three sweeps, followed by an utterly humiliating the Lakers in four games while his common-law wife insists it must be the Clippers who are choking like this. If they finish first in the East, it will be tough for me to not consider. Well, maybe not. To me, it's less about what the Sixers are like the rest of the year because I could see them being just like this. Yeah. It, Occasionally, it is, like elite pop flashes of yeah. excellent defense and good shooting and Embiid staying as hot as he is and um, you know getting out in transition and all that stuff. And I, I think they could win enough games to finish in first being just like this. The bigger question for me is still... What does Brooklyn look like at the end of the year? Because I think they could also, they are a team that certainly could coast a little bit during the regular season and be much better in the playoffs. And yeah. I know you're going to laugh at me, but once Boston has everybody back for a while, I am curious to see what they look like. Because if they if they don't really ever come together, then I'm not too, I'm not too worried about Milwaukee. I guess. Uh, I think I think Milwaukee's still very good, and I think that they are figuring out how they're going to adjust from year to year. Yeah, um, and they're still the second best team in the East right now, tied with Brooklyn. Um, Boston is obviously good. T- uh, Jalen Brown is incredible, um, and Tatum is still, you know, eh, fine. But when they're when they're down, guys, they are they're really thin. thin. Yeah. They really are. thin. I, I don't think Tristan Thompson is a, is a very good basketball player anymore. I, I really like Daniel Tice, but there's, you know, obviously against elite big men in the East, he's he's going to come up a little short. Um, Kemba's is still in, incredible as a shot maker, but, like, very injury prone and expose, exposable on one end. Marcus Smart now injured. And it seems, I mean, Marcus Smart, I haven't seen Marcus Smart miss a shot this year. Like, I, I just haven't seen it. I don't understand it. He's whatsoever. hurt now. He's out. For yeah, he's hurt now, but I, I haven't. It's so theoretically, he, he went down with a, a calf injury that looked like it could have been an Achilles type of thing. So I'm, hopefully that's okay. But but they're thin, and, I, and so I'm not I'm not crazy worried about Boston. I do think you know who knows what happens with Levert in Indiana, but like they're good, and even though they lost to the Embiid the Sixers and Miles My, Turner. Uh, ended up looking pretty stupid. He's been playing pretty great this year. Obviously, we've talked about Sabonis. Um, I think I think the Pacers could, in the right circumstance, like make a run to the conference finals. They would be a the tough weird thing out. For, they would beat you. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Yeah. The weird thing for me is is like beyond that, like the Raptors are starting to come together a little bit. They are. Um, Miami has not been fully healthy, and Miami is now seven games under five hundred. Hmm. Almost uh, like last year was a fluke. No, I mean they've been they've been like just decimated by COVID and injuries and stuff like that. Um, mm. So I I still think they'll find a way into the playoffs. Like if imagine Miami in the eight seed and we have to play uh, like a, a a getting hot Miami Heat team in the first round of the playoffs. Even if we finished one, wouldn't that be a, a treat for us? Well, maybe if they lose in the play-in tournament to somebody, maybe. Yeah, but it's a uh, it's it's interesting because there's still obviously like a, a lot of talent there that I'd be intrigued by i don't think toronto has it this year i think atlanta is good but doesn't have 
quite the you know maturity and and defense yet. And this it's a weird it's a weird year, but there's there's five very good teams in the East right now, um, when healthy. And Brooklyn is very good, but has one of the worst defenses of all time. So, so uh, I think that Brooklyn would probably still be the favorite just by star power alone. And it's not like between Milwaukee and Philly and Boston, there's like a long track record of success there um, in the playoffs. So you go with the guys who have you know gotten to a finals before, mm-hmm. which is uh, two of the guys in Brooklyn. Um, and so, and so we'll see. But uh, I think I think. I was thinking earlier today, like, you know, obviously the Sixers making a run would be very exciting, but, like, would it be a little disappointing for the Sixers, you know, finally, you know, getting over the hump, even getting to the conference finals, getting to the finals? Would that be satisfying to happen in a COVID year where we can't, you know, be there and I can't run outside naked? Well, nothing's stopping you from doing that. You know... Moral, not not morals of being in the nude, but general, you know, health, health practices. So I, I, you know, I feel a little conflicted and and already thinking about that this morning then caused them to lose to the Blazers, whose best player was Rodney Hood. So uh, maybe pump, pump the brakes on that for now. But I think that they have a, as good of a shot as anybody else in the East, for sure. I would I would not put them as a favorite because they, they would still be missing the thing that I said that they're missing and they would have to beat three teams at least two of those teams i would think would have that thing that i don't think the sixers have so which is a perimeter a perimeter initiator a high level perimeter initiator in in crunch time especially in the playoffs i just think it's so important i i don't Who's that, I, that so brooklyn oh, obviously it's who it is who it is boston obviously it is who it is do you do you count malcolm brogdon as as good enough at that well you know, I wouldn't have, but watching him, he's pretty fucking good at it. You know, like he's much better at it than I thought he was. I would not put him as elite, but he's better than anybody the Sixers have. What about Drew in Milwaukee? I'd put him in the same category. I think because I think Milwaukee has the same problem the Sixers have. You know, like I don't, I don't see a team with Drew Holiday as their. Um, uh, you know, as that guy winning a championship. I just, I mean, I Chris, don't. Chris Middleton can do that for himself and can get those touch sure. for himself and in a way that like he's Tobias better. has, has and can as well a little bit. Yeah. Middleton's better than Tobias though at that. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, mm, um, Oh yeah, uh, non basketball question. If you, I almost can't even read his answers because his answers are almost the same as mine. I'm curious what yours are. If you're stuck spending a day in a random small town, what are three things you are most likely to do or visit? I can't even remember. <laughs> I, don't, I don't. I don't remember. I don't remember what it's like. His three things are find a, a local comfort food place so you can overeat. Yes. Uh, find a place to run, like a trail or a, a place where you can see the city and run. Yes, for me. He said antique store. For me, it's usually a record store. I always love to find a record store somewhere. Um, and last one from Sam. Sam says, I was surprised to hear you both say you'd rather cover the sweaty guy in pickup than the smelly guy. Here we go. I would take the smelly guy over the sweaty guy 11 times out of 10 for competitive reasons. I played pickup ball up in Maine with a bunch of juvenile prison guards. Long story. And there was always one or two guys at night who would rip their shirts off and immediately be covered in a thin foam of sweat. I'm 95% sure it was to gain a competitive advantage. The sweaty no-shirt guys slip around screens like they're greased-up bobsledders, and nearly no-rules pickup games they're harder to box out or interfere with when you're crashing the boards. Give me the smelly guy every time. Mm. Competitive yeah, reason. I just disagree. I think I think if if that's happening, then I would also take my shirt off and and match sweat for sweat. Um, and the the smell is annoying. Like it would make me the smell. Mad. The smell is preventative. Yeah, it is. It is. It is restrictive from me doing the things that it was. And I think the sweat it just becomes like you get used to it, and then it's on you, and then it's you're 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 trading sweat, and no one has the competitive advantage. And then the basketball question. 
and this is good leading into Saturday's game. Thinking of a theoretical six net Sixers matchup, and I'm scared to death of even decidedly improved on defense, Tobias Harris guarding someone for seven games. Is he on KD? I feel like Curry, Milton, whoever the point guard is, takes Kyrie. Green on Harris, though those uh, may be swapped. Simmons on Harden. Joel on the future net starter, Norvell Pell, and Tobias on KD. Black, is there any way around that? I mean, it's tough. Every, everyone has this problem. Yes. Everybody is going to have this problem covering Brooklyn. Um, I, I would say Simmons is on uh, KD. I see. Uh, I was... Uh, I was thinking. I would say about, Simmons on KD. I would say Danny Green on Harden. Um, I would say Seth and or Shake or Maxi or Matisse on Kyrie. Um, and put Tobias on, you know, Jeff Green or Joe Harris. It's it's tough. It's a tough. It's a tough matchup. No, I mean they're just gonna score. Yeah, like they're just gonna score a lot. And so the way to do it is have him beat underneath and and force them to hit contested shots and not easy ones at the rim. I was going through this in my head, and I go to myself, well, what if we put Embiid on KD? Like, I was like, Maybe. no. But, but, but then you're pulling him away from the rim. Yeah, for sure. And you're, you're fucked. I, like, I mean, I think that they will – I think that Brooklyn will for sure play with that kind of thing where they'll, they will run small yeah. and go like, okay, Embiid, we're just going to double you every time. Probably put Jeff Green on you. Um. And and hard double with like Harden or or Kyrie and 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 make Danny Green and other guys hit shots, um, and then force Embiid to step out and cover either Jeff Green or or KD or something. It, it would be a really really tough series just because this stylistically they're so different, um, and I think I think Embiid could destroy in that series, but I think also like it, it's requiring. A lot of just get a hand up and hope that it, it they doesn't don't go make in. it. Yeah, yeah. I I think my I think I would rather put Tobias on KD and put Simmons on Harden. I I actually might rather have because I don't think Tobias can cover Durant. He just doesn't have the. <laughs> he's not strong enough to make a difference on Durant, and he's not long enough and quick enough to what about green get a hand on up. Durant? What? What about green on Durant? I'd rather have Simmons on Durant, and I honestly might even say Tobias on, on Harden, because it would, like, at least Harden's not going to be physically bigger than Tobias, whereas, because he's a big guy, he's strong, and he's in, he's in good shape. Harden is going to get him a bunch on step backs, whatever, but I don't think, that, it's not like that step back is, like, such an efficient shot like he can hit it and it's impressive that he can hit it but like i don't mind those step backs i prefer those step backs to like easy pick and roll lobs to whatever rolling big there is or like finishing right at the rim with a layup and getting fouled i think i I think i generally think in the nba like step backs are that's a that's a win that's like like that's a win for the offense or the defense because it's like you're not getting fouled and you're taking a difficult shot. And sometimes it goes in, sometimes it's awesome. But I, I, I think, like, there's no covering it, first of all, so it's, it's like... <laughs> right, there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do. But when he decides to do that, it's like, okay, I guess. Yeah, I, I guess of all the players in the league, he's fucking pretty good at it. Sure. You know. Dame is also very good at it. Yes. All right, well, big game on Saturday night. Let's hope everybody's healthy. A lot of talk from uh, uh, the the Sixers Twitter sphere and blog sphere about uh, you already making excuses about your back to not to not face up with Bodner in the post. Oh, a lot of talk. Look, well, guys who played basketball in ten years comes in talking trash. Now it seems like you're backing out. Look, just because. You want to be on Sixers beat so you can be taken seriously instead of the more popular podcast, and you're taking their side. Me? Yeah, you sound like I want you to play. Their... I want to play. Oh, then I'll play. I. How am I gonna play? I can't even fucking bowl. I like like how am I gonna play? I, but, I will... but you just said last week that you would win. I was. It was. It's a fucking podcast. I will gladly. I will play them in horse. I will play any basketball <laughs> skill competition that doesn't right, involve. Gra- then I might have to grab Sixers Adam or MOC. 
Well, uh, that or, doesn't. Or Zo or AU or whoever. Any well, or Abby. I don't. I, <laughs> but if there's a game, if there's a charity game, and I, you know. A I'm charity game? You, you, but like, well, wait a minute. What, we should get out of our houses first before we start worrying course, about the charity game. But it's, got, it's the first thing I've been excited to buy in years. <laughs> Friggin looking at Dave Ruder sending me Rich Hoffman high school articles to get excited about covering him. So I, I don't even know if I should like I, – I won't, I won't reveal like inside of any of this. I, I guess I will say before they went on their little uh, – their little rant where they they played naughty and cursed. Um, uh, Derek went I, after you pretty good. I'm surprised you didn't bring it up. I didn't hear it. Like I I saw that they posted it on Twitter, but I, I, I like I don't know what he said. What did he say? Wow, I don't. You you should watch it. I'm not gonna watch it. What did he say? <laughs> I don't. I, I'm not gonna do it justice. He went. He went after you. There was a. There was almost a diss track happening as it was happening. Well, I'll say this: Derek's entire career is because I created it. So, <laughs> so like, why don't we before before we worry about Derek's diss tracks? Understand that the only reason anybody pays to read Derek is because I told them to. So, so once we get that out of the way, um, and and they're finished, like in our in our trail, like in the, like in the, the smoke trail behind us, um, as they struggle to breathe in that, then we can worry about Derek's diss track. As soon as he just admits that his career is due to me, then we can, we can move forward on this whole thing. Sounds like you're deflecting based on I, not wanting to play in this basketball game. I can't physically, Derek probably outweighs me by 110 pounds. I'll end up in traction. I disagree. Derek looks very slim in this video. He's There's lost some no, weight. Well, he's maybe going he's the like, other way. I'm I'm going the opposite way. I'm getting I'm getting uh, plumper and harder to move. <laughs> and Derek um, is Derek's the best shape of his life. He's friggin' uh, media day body. Oh wow! And I'm, I'm sure his walking around his neighborhood and taking pictures of birds with his fucking drone. I'm sure is is pretty intense exercise. Um, look, all I, I and I I told Hoffman this. The last time I tried anything like this, I was at a charity bowling thing. And I, like, I went to it. This was two years ago. And I went to it thinking, I'm not going to bowl. I'm just going to go there. And then everybody's having fun. And I'm like, you know what? I'll bowl a couple frames. I bowl like two or three frames. Something tweaks. I leave the fucking bowling thing with tears in my eyes. I get home and my wife is yelling at me for bowling and I basically laid in bed all night praying that when I woke up in the morning I was going to be able to put on my shoes. I can't play real basketball. But like I said, I will I will participate in any sort of skills competition they would like. But I can't yeah. have I'm, I'm going to have to do some do some recruiting of the of on the Ricky bench to see if I can Well, Mike's Mike can play. Mike's a good Mike's a good basketball player. That's what that's what Rich said. He might be too good. I might need to go down to to the Sixers Adam. Oh, he's too good. I think I don't know. I don't want I want him to get I want to get as close to a replacement as you. I don't want to have to feel like it's it's a ringer. Also, there's no telling what allegiance Michael Connor has to us versus his former coworkers at the Athletic. Oh, I think Mike has allegiance to us. I don't I know. Mean, I'm going to talk to Zoe. I'm going to talk to AU. I'll talk to Sixers Adam. We'll see we'll see what we come up with. Because I, I I want something I just want a basketball game to look forward to at the end of this thing because I'm going. <laughs> you to... you know there are other basketball games you can play. No, but th- not not any of them that have this have this much hype and trash talk around it. See that the, the, the thing that bothers me so much is that I and you, I don't know if you'll believe me or not. I would I would like to do it so bad for two reasons. First of all, because the trash talk leading up to it would be amazing. Second of all, you know I love a big spectacle, and we could make a big spectacle out of it. Um, and because I actually miss like physical competition that isn't running, but it would be such a bad idea for me to do, uh, especially because obviously I'd have to be the one. I'd be guarding Derek, right? I, probably. I, I think like, Rich is probably the more perimeter-oriented player. Yeah, so I, like I can't fucking bang in the post. I, I wouldn't it be Way easier up. to hang in the post rather than, you know, move your feet around the perimeter? No. I'll, I mean, I'll cover my, Derek if you'd rather. Whatever you want. My, my fear would be, like, my fear is jumping and landing, and my fear is, 
There's not this, much of that in basketball. You don't well, have to jump or land. That, but this, this is what I'm telling you. This <laughs> is what I'm telling you. All right. Well, you sound like a uh, like a, a wrestling like a manager who's like who you know tries to like grab someone's hair while they're uh, trying for, trying for a pin, and then when they like go to the ropes and look at him, you're just like, oh no no no, I got my back, my back. Wait a minute, wait a minute. They started this, and and Hoffman. <laughs> This is how this is how in their heads we are. Hoffman accused me of planting the person in the chat to ask him good. to play the the fucking game. That's pretty good. All right, well, we'll see. I'll talk to the I'll talk to our guys. Okay. Um, you have anything else? No. Let's uh let's beat Brooklyn. That would be a nice feeling. It would. Let's let's hope everybody is healthy enough to at least play Brooklyn. I'll take that as the first step and I'll take let's beat Brooklyn as the second. Uh all right, are you done with TTP? Yeah, you know like this. If you don't fuck with me, then I, then I won't fuck, fuck with you. If you don't fuck with me, then I won't, I won't fuck, fuck with, you. with you. But if you fuck with me, I'm gonna fucking kill you! Thanks for playing.